Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. We are back and better than ever in today. We are talking about our arithmetic sequences. Some people want to say arithmetic, but in this context, when we're talking sequences, it is arithmetic sequences. Part one. We might get through the whole thing today. Not sure. We'll see how it goes. Let's get to it. Shall we? We will be back to you, Coldplay. All right. So, a sequence of numbers. Here's a sequence of numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Could be any set of numbers in a row. This particular sequence goes on forever, as indicated by these through three dots. And the sequence is generating, generated just by adding 2 to the previous term. And we say that the common difference is 2. More on that later. All right, so um, <clears throat> let's see. A number sequence is an ordered list of numbers defined by a rule. This is important stuff, this vocabulary. It's boring writing, but we need to know it. The numbers in the sequence are, C are members of the sequence or terms. Um, if a sequence goes forever, it's infinite. If it stops, it is finite. So this sequence here is infinite because it continues forever, but uh, this sequence here is finite because it terminates at 23. There's no um, dot, dot, dot to um, indicate that it's going forever. Um, you can talk about a sequence here, the sequence of bricks here. In the first row, there's three. In the second row, there's four. There's five, and so on. Okay, so the terms are three, four, five, six. Okay, and here is real important. We're using what is called an explicit formula here, where u sub n equals n plus 2, and we call this the general term. And n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. Hugely important what is meant by that. Those are the term numbers. These guys right here are the term numbers. So, for instance, u sub 1 here is equal to 1 plus 2, okay? So uh, that's um, th that gives me the total of 3, and u sub 1 stands for the first row. 3 is the first term. u sub 2 equals 2 plus 2. That's equal to 4. 4 is the second term. 5 is the third term. And notice that all we're doing is we're adding the term number to the number 2. Because if you look, um, the number of bricks here is 2 more than the, the row number. It's, three, um, <clears throat> it's 2 more than this row number. It's 2 more than this row number. So that's why there's always a 2 here. Um, okay. The general term will define any single um, particular term in the sequence. Um, usually we use, um, or we can use, a general term, and we can call it u sub n, t sub n, t sub n, or a sub n. Those are the most common ones. In this course, we stick with u sub n. Um, u sub n is the general term. Whatever u sub n equals, it actually represents every single term. And then we'll have some formula. For example, u sub n equals 2n plus 1. Okay, so this is the general term. It represents all terms in the sequence. How do we find the first term? Well, it's the term number is 1, right? So that's 2 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 3. You can see that's the three, uh, the first term in the sequence. U sub 2 is going to equal um, 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. That's the second term in the sequence, and so on. Blah, 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 blah. So it's very important to understand that u sub 1 is equal to 3, and u sub 2 is equal to 5 which is the first term in the sequence, and this is the second term in the sequence, as indicated by the subscript um, of the general term. Okay, so 
we said that we were going to start, uh, we were going to talk about arithmetic sequences. And all you need to know, know really about an arithmetic sequence is it has the same common difference or it increases by the same amount. For example, this sequence is generated by adding 3 to the previous term. We can say it's arithmetic because term minus previous term is equal to the same thing throughout. 5 minus 2, second term minus um, first term, equals third term minus second term, equals fourth term minus third term, equals uh, fifth term minus fourth term, getting uh, all those from here, and they all equal 3. Okay, And that 3 is known as the common difference. The common difference. And you can find the common difference by uh, subtracting any two consecutive terms. It's, of course, the term minus the previous term. 19 minus 23 is negative 4. 23 minus 7 is negative 4. 27 minus 31 is negative 4. So the common difference here would be negative 4. Um, <clears throat> and here we have it symbolically. If the general term is arithmetic, then the term minus the previous term is a constant. So let's think about this. U sub n plus 1 minus u sub n. So let's just suppose uh, n equals 5. Okay, then this would be u sub 6, right, 5 plus 1, minus u sub 5. And that has to equal a common difference d throughout and if that does happen, then it's arithmetic. Okay. And then we have the general term for formula for an arithmetic sequence. And here it is. Uh, for an arithmetic sequence with first term u sub 1 right here and common difference d right here, the general term or nth term is given thusly. So if I wanted to find the tenth term, I would say u sub 10 equals the first term, whatever that is, plus 10 minus 1 multiplied by d, okay? And all of that is given to you here on this handy-dandy formula sheet. Um, all kinds of se series and sequence uh, formulas, but right now um, we have this, and you will always, always have this um, to use. Okay. Let's do some examples. Consider the sequence uh, 2, 9, 16, 23, 30. Show that the sequence is arithmetic. Okay. All we have to do is show for the terms um, given that they have the same common difference. Consecutive terms have the same common difference. So second term minus first term has to be equal to third minus second has to be equal to fourth minus third, and so on, has to be equal to fifth minus fourth, and they all equal seven. And this assumes when you have these ellipses, then um, it uh, you can assume that the pattern that you've seen continues forever and ever and ever. So that's all we have to do for part A. Part B, find a formula for the general term u sub n. So we've already determined there it's, that it's arithmetic, so we can find the general term using the formula that they gave us. So u sub n is equal to u sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So in order to find the general term, all I need is u sub 1 and d. Okay. So u sub n is equal to, the first term is 2, oops, I uh, need the plus there, plus n minus 1 times the common difference d, which is 7. And I can simplify that. Uh, it'll make it easier when I start making calculations. 2 uh, plus um, 7n minus 7 using the distributive property. So my general term turns out to be 7n minus 5. Easy peasy. Okay. So to find the 100th term of the sequence, 
Well, I know my general term is equal to 7n minus 5. So if I want to find the 100th term, I replace n with 100. u sub 100 is equal to 7 times 100 minus 5 equals 700 minus 5, which is 695. Okay. Need a little room, so I'm going to cover this up here. Uh, I just wanted to show you where that formula was on your formula sheet. All right, so um, let's go to D. Is 828, 2341 a term of the sequence? So let's think about this, okay? So here's the deal. If it's a term of the sequence, that means that u sub something has to equal 828, okay? So in other words, if this kept going, uh, 30, um, 37, 44, 51, boom, 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 would 828 be in this list? Well, we could go forever and ever and ever and keep adding and see, um, or we can use some algebra. We know that the general term is equal to 7n minus 5. Okay, that's the general term. Well, let's see if 820, how 828 works out if I replace u sub n with it. Because if I do that, I can solve for n right here and get the term number. So let's see how that works out. 7n minus 5, I add 5, so I get 833 equals 7n. And if I divide both sides by 7, I get n equal to 119. So that means it is the 119th term. So the answer is a resounding, yes, it is, because it's the 119th term. So... Just to, if you wanted to check, you could say, okay, u sub 119 would equal 7 times 119 plus 5, okay? And that's from our explicit, our general term right here, u sub n equals 7 times n minus 5. And if you uh, did that, that does indeed equal 828, okay? And so that was part I. Let's do II. And is 2341 a, a, um, a term of the sequence? So we want to know if I kept going, would I get 2341? So again, I know my general term is equal to 7n minus 5. So I replace that, 2341 equals 7n minus 5. Adding 5 to both sides, I get 2346 equals 7n. And if I divide that uh, by 7, I actually come into or uh, end up with 335 and 1 7 and 1 7. Well, remember, n is a term number, right? We have u sub 1 in a sequence, u sub 2, u sub 3, and on and on and on. First term, second term, third term right? Well, you can't have a 30, 335 and 1 seventh term. In other words, these n's must be integers, okay? It's the second term. It's the third term. There's no third and a half term. It must be an integer. So since we did not get an integer, no, no, uh, 2341 is not part of this sequence. Again, because n is not an integer. Looks like we are going to have two parts. As such, we're going to check in with our good friends from Coldplay. And with that, uh, I'm going to say that I am Oh, See it, part two.